Can the Brewers break their current postseason losing streak? We're going to find out in a second. But first, I want to talk about a special we have going on at wagertalk.com this week. It's seven days of all-access service, just $77. It's October. There's so many different sports going on. I know for me, you'd get WNBA playoffs, Korean baseball playoffs, Major League Baseball playoffs, NFL, college football. It's one of the best times of the year to be a sports fan. And all-access service this week, just $11 a day, seven uh, seven days, 77 bucks, a great deal over at Wager Talk. So check that out for any handicapper. Now, Mets Brewers game two. Uh, we have a rematch of a regular season matchup that we saw last Friday. And that that's really important because for a couple of reasons. One, we don't get that dynamic that often uh, in, in Major League Baseball playoffs where, you know, that does happen during the regular season a ton. Um, we don't get it that often in the playoffs. Uh, and two, there were some takeaways from that game and some numbers I dug up that lead me to believe that that the Brewers are, are the correct side here. So uh, the first thing that I found on a baseball broadcast about a week and a half ago was, and this is super interesting to me, uh, consecutive starts versus the same opponent for pitchers this season. And surprisingly, most pitchers have been better the second time around against against a, a given opponent. So it, it sort of disproves, at least at least with the sample size of this year, like disproves the theory that, okay, because Montas beat the Mets last week, that, you know, they're going to make the adjustment and we should go against him. Because uh, that's always been, I think, that the way, you know, a lot of handicappers would look at it is, okay, MLB pitchers or MLB hitters have the chance to make the adjustment. Um, now they get to see the same guy in, in quick succession and, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go the other way. And, and those statistics from this year sort of disprove that. And, and now, you know, we've got a, a pretty large sample size. So it, it's, whereas in the past I might be a, like concerned, okay, a, Montes just had success against this team. So now I don't want to turn around and, and play on him six days later, uh, the numbers this year show that that hasn't been an issue um, and, and that's something we'll get back to here. So just let, let's just start with yesterday's game. Some really tough luck yesterday for the Brewers, uh, you know, pitching and, and defense, bullpen pitching and defense did them in. And the reason I say tough luck is, is those are essentially the two sort of best attributes of this Brewers team. It's been their, their strength all year. So, you know, Jackson Churio misplays a ball. And the Brewers decide to go to their bullpen maybe too early. And it turns into five two-out one runs for the Mets. Uh, the decision to pull Peralta totally blows up uh, in, in the face of, uh, of Murphy, the manager. And, you know, it just didn't work out. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure Pat Murphy will kick himself about that. Obviously, no one's questioning him if it works. Uh, but his decision to go to the bullpen didn't work out. Uh, unfortunately, Peralta came out after the game, said he doesn't understand why he was taken out. That's not the best thing. Like I go back to last year's playoffs with Bar Barrios and the Blue Jays and something similar happened. And, it, and, and it, it, you, you ended up with the Blue Jays team the next day that sort of lacked effort a little bit. Uh, but listen, this is a Milwaukee team this year that has had an elite bullpen. They've been elite defensively. And those were the two things that let them down in game one. Uh, so I, I just think it's a little bit of, of bad luck, bad timing there from Milwaukee. And I, I don't really expect this game to be managed much differently here from Murphy. I, I think he knows that the strength of this team is pitching in defense. And I think he's going to continue to manage accordingly like he did yesterday. Um, you know, as I said at the top, the Brewers have lost six straight playoff games and now lost 10 of 11. I, I'm not sure if, you know, what there is to that or if that's something that, you know, should really be taken into a handicap here. Obviously a lot of those games were different seasons. And, and so I do think that's generated some value on the Brewers because of, of that narrative. Okay. Well, they've lost six straight playoff games. Well, well, this team has lost just one playoff game, right? Anything in previous seasons to me is irrelevant. That was different manager, different team. So really the Brewers have lost one game. And if they win today, they have everything to play for tomorrow. So I'm, I don't think that this team is like down and out by any means. And I think some of that sort of narrative has maybe created a little bit of line value with the Brewers suddenly much cheaper than they were yesterday. Now, 
I think you're going to get a similar, I think that you're going to get the same type of, of approach from Pat Murphy here, meaning he's going to start Frankie Montas and he's not going to be hesitant to go to his bullpen, especially if he has the lead. And I think it's even less likely that he's hesitant to go to the bullpen because there is no way that Murphy is, is going to go down in this playoffs without Devin Williams being in there, without uh, Trevor Meagill being in there. Those are his best pitchers, and the ball will be in their hands in this game with the season on the line. You, you can pretty much guarantee it. So I do think that actually creates some additional value here with Montas because he, he's actually been very solid this season. Um, you know, he's not someone that ha- he, he doesn't have wipeout stuff at this point. He's probably not going to go in and, and fire eight scoreless. But what he will do is give you a, a pretty solid four or five innings. Um, he's given up three runs or fewer in eight of his last 11 starts that's since being traded to the Brewers. And, you know, he's a guy that I think Murphy's going to trust at least once through the order. But again, he, he's not going to hesitate. He'll I, I would not be surprised to see Miguel. Uh, or McGill in early in this game, if needed. Devin Williams in for a two-out save. And I think that all, that that kind of gives you a little bit of, of line value edge with the Brewers because, again, those guys are elite pitchers. And the fact that you might get potentially three to four innings um, in this game of McGill and Williams, if if they need it, it is, represents a pretty big edge in terms of how I would price the Brewers here. The other thing, so I go back to that pitching chart that I referenced at the beginning of uh, of the breakdown. You know, I saw things last week, and I was wrong about this game. I had the Mets in this game against the Brewers, uh, but that was a, more of a situational type play. Uh, but I saw some things with Sean Manaya that I think could potentially creep up in, in this game here. Um the reason he struggled so badly last week against the Brewers is that Brewers team, this Brewers team, is elite at working counts. They take pitches as well as any team in the league. Uh, they draw walks at a rate as high as any team in the league. And, you know, what Manea has needed to do this year or what what is, has sort of gotten him, you know, all what, where his, a lot of his success has come from this year uh, is generating swing and miss, um, you know, uh, reincorporating the sinker, pitching out of the zone. And with the way the Brewers take pitches, at least last week's start, they forced him to come in the zone. And they didn't really allow him to nibble. They didn't allow him to expand the zone. And suddenly, it meant he had to throw a strike down the middle, essentially, to Reese Hoskins. And it was put into the left field seats for four runs and a grand slam. Um, you know, and, and, and so... Over the course of a few innings, that I think the Brewers are going to be able to generate base runners. And that is so huge because the Mets had no chance against the Brewers on the base pass last week. Now, if Alvarez is back there, it's different. But um, this Brewers team can run. Uh, they they Going into yesterday, they were 17 for 17 stolen bases on the Mets this season. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're on base and, and running again. And, and Maneo was really... You know, it was a it was a high effort sort of thing for him to have to control the run game last week against the Mets. And again, it goes into getting guys on base. Suddenly he's got to worry about base runners. Suddenly, you know, his close pitches are balls. And then he's either walking guys, which is is always sort of been an issue for him, or he's got to come into the zone. And, and that was a big issue in the game last week. Um, and then, of course, it's the postseason. So it's even tougher and more crucial, you know, to, to make pitches, right? Like it's every pitches is, is high intensity, you know, high leverage type spot. And Manaya hasn't handled that well in the postseason so far. Uh, three outings in the postseason, 7.2 innings pitch. He's given up 13 runs. So he hasn't had postseason success. So I like the Brewers here. Um, backs against the wall. I think you see zero hesitation with Murphy to go to the bullpen. and. I just think it gives the Brewers a, a edge that's bigger than than what the odds makers suggest here. So game two, I like Brewers minus 115. I think they, they extend this to a third game and find a way to get the win. 